In this video, I will talk about synchronization in Pintos. Pintos provides two primary utilities or tools for doing synchronization. One is a lock, the other is a semaphore. So to step back a little bit and understand what synchronization is all about, uh, we think of synchronization to achieve one of two things. One, it's to facilitate mutual exclusion. What we mean by that is if there is a resource that two threads let's say uh, two processes let's say process a and process b both wants want to use this resource and this resource could be something as simple as a variable count a global variable and and if this wants to increment this guy and let's say this one also wants to increment this guy or maybe even decrement this guy then we want to make sure that while this one is part way through his increment this one doesn't run so the simple way to do that is to is to wrap this in some sort of a lock we can put a lock uh, here and we can put an unlock here and do the same thing put a lock here and put the unlock here so this will make sure that this resource whenever it's access nobody else is going to be accessing it the second form of uh, uh, synchronization we will be using in in um, pintos uh, is event ordering event ordering says that i want to perform some event let's say process a wants to perform an event and it wants to make sure that this event wherever that is is only possible after process b let's call this event a only after process b has performed some event b so in other words e, when process a tries to perform this event a it stops and it only gets it blocks if you will and it only gets unblocked when process b sends it an unblock So he sends it an unblock, a notification, if you will, and only then he can move on. So we're able to accomplish an ordering of events. This one says B before A. So the two tools that are available in Pintos are locks, as I said, and semaphores. Locks, I'm going to look at the uh pinto's documentation here is what it says about locks the the lock mecha locking mechanism is implemented in a in a library called sync so the library is called sync.h it's been implemented here and and it has a, it it looks like this so uh, the example i just showed you let's say we have process a and process b and somehow we don't i don't care how it is they both have access to a struct lock now if this is a parent and a child maybe the child has has created uh, has a lock as part of his thread structure and the parent because he created the child has access to the lock as well so there's a struct lock so somewhere this struct lock has been declared uh, struct lock sorry uh, let's call this uh, mutex has been declared and it was initialized so we'll do a we'll do a lock in it and we'll pass the mutex which means both of them have access to it now when he's going to try to do a count plus plus he's gonna before that he's gonna acquire the lock so he'll do a lock underscore acquire and he passes the mutex and when he's done 
he's going to do a lock underscore release ampersand mutex and b does the same thing whenever process b has to run he's going to do a lock acquire on mutex and he then does his whatever his count minus minus and then he does a lock release this is as simple this is the simplest form of using locks here's this here's how semaphores work We'll see semaphores in a lot more detail, but semaphores can actually be used for two, both for ordering and mutual exclusion. For but here I'm just going to use them for for ordering purposes. When a semaphore is this, if you go back to our library, it says up here that semaphore is are also implemented from in Pintos in our sync.h so again we have we'll define a semaphore a struct semaphore for for some ordering let's call that order and we'll initialize it we'll do a semi in it on it and call pass an address to that and then now if process a wants to wants to wait for an event he'll do a semi down uh, and he'll do a ampersand order there's a small thing that we have to do important but very very significant thing that when we initialize this we'll initialize it to a zero and we'll see what what the rationale behind that is uh, much later so when and now when we when process b process b run, process b has its code and whenever he wants to give this guy the go ahead so maybe he's doing his go ahead here he'll do a semi up on order so what's going to happen is here's a sequence of events uh, we when we start this guy is running at some point he's going to make this call and he's going to block and then process b let's say runs he runs this is two he performs this operation three so this is my zero do something perform that he performs a two some other stuff does a three and this three will cause a notification basically it'll unblock so four step four is to unblock and once he unblocks he's going to execute whatever this is so that is the sequence of operations